Now, what were you listening to a lot before this record? Um, I mean, I guess um, I sort of reverted back to a lot of stuff that I was listening to when I first started getting into making music. Um, you know, I guess some of David Bowie's um, records that he worked on with Brian Eno and then Talking Heads, um, you know, a lot of their albums. Um, even sort of like kraut rock kind of stuff as well. Um, and, and then uh, I guess perhaps some sort of like early 80s stuff that was influenced by African music like Malcolm McLaren's Duck Rock and um, yeah, I guess Grace Jones and, and some of the sort of New York street bands um, like Liquid Liquid from that era. So um, yeah, it was a range of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like um, it's funny that you did that for this record. I, I bet you did it for In Ghost Colors too because you were in New York and you were sort of in the middle of where all that stuff happened to that album, right? Mm. I think that's always been a part of um, <laughs> part of making music is taking some uh, taking some time to get inspired by something um, enough to sort of put pen to paper and um, and and make something that you're going to um, put the devote the time to recording and um, and then touring. And I think with Zonoscope. Um, having done that a couple of times and we, we wanted to make something that was um, quite a bit of a departure from what we've done before. Um, so part of uh, an essential part of that process is kind of clearing the slate and taking some extra time to um, to think what are what are gonna be some of the you know the inspirations and ingredients in making that record. It seems like where you recorded really helped with that because um, from the documentary I saw that it was just a giant warehouse. Is that the best way to? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was definitely <laughs> giant. Um, and that, that all came down to um, we sort of talked about what we wanted to do with this record. Um, and it was our idea to make it uh, different to, um, to our records previously. And part of that was um, as well as the different inspirations and different approaches, it was going to be um, just where we made the record and, and what responsibilities we took on ourselves and, um, you know, we sort of self-produced um, and we wanted to find a big space where we could just allow a lot of room for experimentation and that we didn't have any pressure of being in a, in a commercial studio with other people sort of bothering us. So it seems to flow from song to song. They're they're all connected in a way. And like how um, how much was that pre-planned to have it be more of an? I think of it more of an album album. So yeah. You have to go all the way through. Well, it didn't happen by accident. I mean, we, yeah. we obviously um, spent a lot of time sort of making these things sort of um, you know as sort of seamless and experiences they can be. Um, and I think. Um, I mean, I kind of had a bit of a vision for, for the way this, this record might work. I guess just from records that I like, um, you know, like KLF's Chill Out record or um, Malcolm McLaren's Duck Rock again. I guess records where there's, there's sort of like a real continuity and a sort of um, identity and a sort of sense of, you know, being somewhere when you're listening to, um, to the whole album, you know, from start to finish. We wanted to kind of, you know, create a real experience for the listener and, and uh, and sort of, you know, if people want to listen to it from start to finish, they sort of, you know, have the full experience. Now, I wanted to ask, you guys seem very quiet right now, but I've seen you guys play and you're very animated. What do you do to go from like this to on a stage, like, do you, do you have rituals? Do you we can pump do. each other up, or? We found for a while there that um, everybody had their laptops out too much in the in the band room. So I think I can't remember who made the decision. We we had to ban our laptops, and um, and instead we went out and bought a, a big stereo for our band room, and um, so we can play all the records we buy and, and get ourselves a little bit fired up. Probably uh, putting a, a stretching regime. 
and mm. um, I think yeah. it's all our vibe has benefited. But that's how it happens. I think we're a bit, a bit <laughs> quiet during the day, and then we. Well, so we're like nocturnal animals. Yeah. You have a, a, did you say a stretching routine? Mm, a little bit, yeah. Like a group, like deep lunges and a little like side bends mm. and yoga, light yoga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mitchell invents stretches. Yeah. He's like a stretchologist. <laughs> He's a total quack, though. He's, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> going to be discredited by the... We're all going to end up in neck braces. Stretching moment. association. It's, what do you listen to to get like, ready for playing? Just new stuff that you bought, or do you have, like, go-to Generally like, the classics. Go-to, yeah. yeah. Something to sing along to. Very com- yeah, comfortable songs, just to really... Something we all know, usually. The Smiths, or Prince, or Michael Jackson. Steely Dan. Yeah.